Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're doing a like a, a road course car out of it. It'd be street legal, but we're doing four link and coilovers and yeah. big big uh, sway bars and coyote yeah. motor and frame connectors. And oh yeah, absolutely. Matter of fact, those were supposed to get installed today, but my my guy uh, said, "Hey, I lost track of time. Can I do it tomorrow?" It is a weekend though. <laughs> and it's Mother's Day. Really? We're car guys get days off. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're lucky enough right now to have a day off. Yeah. We're all sitting around eating, went to a car show. <laughs> it's funny you talk about that because of me getting my ass dragged on the television. Hi, Terry. Well, yeah, I actually started getting like days off and stuff. And, uh, what? and it kind of threw me in that time space continuum because well, at my job, whenever the camera quits filming, I mean, they lock the doors, they slam the padlock, everything they put a lock on, and you get that on the other side of the fence. You guys got things <laughs> off? Now we do. Because uh, we are t totally chained to the camera crew, and they're all union. Oh, so, yeah. And if you got a union You guys can shoot to 530. <laughs> yeah, after that, you're on your own. Yeah. Well, we, what, what we used to do, though, when, when we were doing our shows, is... Um, if the, when the camera crews left, you know, five, five, three, yep. six o'clock, we would um, uh, stick around and get the real work shop, out. and we would, we would get a bunch of stuff done. It didn't matter; it wasn't going to change the flow of anything. Yep. And we would either prep for the next day, get stuff done that was hidden, <laughs> that would save time the next day, that would save minutes, and get that stuff done. Well, well, my, my producer was. Uh, we got people recording. The sword band. He didn't want to miss people. Anything. He's recording. He wanted to give. <laughs> he, he wanted to give this girl as much content yeah, as he possibly could. Yeah. And he, the, the the worst thing yeah. he could ever possibly yeah. hear in his life is that uh, where is the content from wearing this That's train? Which you do that. got pulled out and put back in. Well, you got to make it happen. Oh yeah, we were we were even allowed to do anything major like that. But we would do little stuff that they wouldn't notice. We would see. Yeah. You know, which is no big deal. Stuff that we knew that it's, it's like you, if you're building a car in a shop, you know, you get to a certain point in the build yeah. where the you car know. looks the same for a week and a half. The customer stops by on Monday, sees it, right. when you come back on Friday, and it looks exactly the same to him, you'll go, You haven't touched my car. I know, but that, that, that's when they would have the time lapses up, and you show the guys doing it, coming out, doing it, yeah. coming out, upside down, the, up, down, wheels on, wheels off. Yeah. <laughs> in, 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 hey, let's put the distributor in 180 out to make this last longer. Yeah. <laughs> See if we can, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, 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 the only goal was to make some kind of a uh, tragic something that if you could get flame to touch the camera, you were going to get it. Well, one thing that was neat about doing uh, our shows when I was at Power Block, yep. our whole deal was about content. They wanted teachable content. So guys, so guys that were that were watching the shows, we knew yeah. their intent was, let's see if this crazy idiot from Canada can show us how to do something today. Right. And we do two minute tacks and we do uh, specific parts of build that we would make in real time. Yeah. If it took two and a half minutes to shoot, it used the whole two and a half minutes because we were all just tech, 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 tech. Not about not about necessarily the the finished product of the whole car. Yeah. But oh. actually showing guys tech. And that's what we got. We got a lot of Really, really good responses from all that, all the time. Well, I mean, we, we do that too, and uh, we even always would take that a, a lot further. Like, uh, um, I really like mentioning the engineers and all the other things that, uh, like certain car model years and stuff like that, the, the different nuances of this car and how it changed in America. Like the 30, oh, yeah. Well, like the 32 changed the world because when Henry Ford spent that $164 million dollars, Coming up, then we cast a block. Yeah, it, it changed the world. Yeah. And everybody told him that it there's no work. way it would ever work because the rings and the pistons were going to wear on that V8 yeah. on the bottom side. They, and they, they, they giant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so nobody else did it. Yep. Yeah, but he did it. And I love crazy stuff like that. Yeah. And viewers do too. Hmm? They like that. Viewers do too. They like oh, yeah. hearing about all that yeah. goofy stuff or just anything yeah. goofy. Or they love it when you stand there and roll off stats, and they they, they just stand up and go, whoa, what? Well, back in the old days, I mean, engineers were treated like rock stars were treated now. Right. I mean, and, and especially like, GM during the 50s. Oh my yeah, yeah, yeah. The it was just it was crazy, yeah, was stuff cold, that they, and stuff that they were allowed to do. <coughs> they they looked at the cars, you know, they looked yeah. like airplanes and big winged everything, and and. Did you ever see that uh, Delor uh, John DeLorean had that uh, 
for Chip's show to come on. It was the only show, or Jesse, when Monster yeah. Garage was on way back then. Right. So we would wait for the day for the car show to come on. Yeah. Now, you get home from work, turn it on, boop. I mean, there's, there's nothing you can watch the car shows yeah. everywhere, yeah. It's, yeah. it's bizarre, really, really bizarre. And they still want more. Um, and it, well, it, eventually, we're going to run out of all these old cars because uh, basically, it seems like the cutoff was like 1973, and, right. after, and after that, there wasn't anything else worth selling. Well, what, what I think they're going to start and I believe me, you know, we do this for a living. We do this every day, you know, keeps we, we're doing this before TV, yeah. even yeah. carried with his work. So I hope it lasts as long as it can, but um, we have, how many different ways can you present it? Sooner or later, TV is going to be tired of us, like everything else that's come down television in the last four, five, six decades. And when they're done with you, they're done with you. Exactly, yeah. And, and some of these guys that have relied on and let TV become their existence instead of remaining in the core of what the industry is. Right. When we do it because we love it, even though we're not getting rich doing it, I, I feel sorry for some of you guys. Yeah, I mean, and, and, that, and that, that is actually the one of the things that I'm stuck in myself. Really? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've got a couple of things now that I'm diversifying, but, I mean, there's, there's like... There's nobody in the background saying, you, uh, you have all your eggs in the same basket, someone tip over your basket? Yeah, I, I never have, luckily. I've been blessed, knock on wood. Like I said, I've, I've, with what I can do with my hands and, and everything because of a handful of guys that, when I was in my early 20s, uh, in the early 80s, I had to convince guys that were twice my age yep. that I knew to let me work in your shop, let me come in and do it. I was the kid going, uh, hey, I want to do this. Let, you know, let me do this. Let me show you I can do it. Well, it was really hard for somebody to trust so a 22-year-old. Exactly, yeah. And then as I got into it and went along, it, you know, one thing turns into another, turns into another, turns into another. Yep. I, I'm so lucky and, to be so diversified. I get to do so many things. And, and well, I mean, how shops are. The minute you do a job better than the... The, the the patriarch in there can do it well. He's butt hurt, and then uh, and then uh, I, I know yeah. exactly what. You're you know what? That, that you're right. You're absolutely right. That does happen. But what, what I think is the best thing about our world yeah. is that 99 out of 100 car guys are great guys. Like if you and I end up working in the shop doing one job, right. whatever it was with with Jesse or Joey or whoever, yeah, I would show you or or give you anything that I had that you needed to do it. And almost every guy is like that. There's, yeah. a, there's, a, there's a little tiny, tiny percentage of the guys. I, I are, really and you know what? You run into them so rarely, and that is just yeah, great well, and fine with me. Well, I don't, I, well, I'm kind of the polar opposite. I ran into a whole, matter of fact, uh, I was- You got them all that's right in No, no, I mean, I, I, uh, uh, I was a giant killer. I mean, uh, as I did more drivability, because I mean, like when I worked at Ford, and, uh, I, always, I, didn't, I didn't get any good work. I always got to shit work. Really? I, uh, oh, yeah, we all did. I mean, like, it's funny. Like, the guys nowadays come in, and um, you do whatever it takes. Exactly. Period. Yeah. I mean, if you're if it's, if it's your turn to sweep the floor, you sweep the floor. If you need yeah. to run and get parts because you're the only one that's not doing something, then you go get the parts. There's no such thing as that's not my job. Yeah, but but the world don't realize when you're, you're – when the knowledge base that you have to have to become a mechanic – Versus the knowledge base that you have to have to be uh, become a doctor. Well, uh, they haven't updated the human body in seventy five thousand years, <laughs> and every year you gotta have to up everything yeah. that's updated. Yeah. And now uh, you gotta buy your own tools. I mean, uh, yeah. the doctor just walks in the hospital and gets whatever. Well, I'm, I'm I'm old enough to remember the day back in the days when I went. I'm never buying metric tools. I don't need metric tools. Hey, I'm yes, not gonna yes, buy metric tools. Yes. And now I have one of them in the and my shop is all metric tools. And then America yeah. tried to turn metric, and that didn't work. And then they, they turned half metric. Yeah. Uh, then they turned all metric. But, but, most, but most of the stuff I still do at the age of 57, and I've been doing it since I was 14, 15 years old, for me is still 1960s and back. Right. So um, I can work on the late stuff if I have to, especially if it's my own personal cars and friends' yeah. cars. But I stay away from it. I don't want to be the guy that plugs in the diagnostic tool and the guy at the auto store tells me what I need 
and not be a mechanic. I can listen to a motor, like you, I'm sure. I can listen to a motor and tell you what's wrong with it. I can, you know, you, there's, you just, you buy what somebody tells you, you learn and have learned what the, the motor, the transmission, the brakes, the axles, by noises, by inoperability, by whatever level it's at, what's wrong with it? And nowadays, you're just not, try and find guys that are under 30 years old that can do that. I mean, right. just, they plug it in, they diagnose it, they give you a part, you leave. Well, well, I, well I'm, I'm the guy that uh, spent that $20,000 and got the, the latest Did you really? yeah. scanner. And uh, I mean, well, the the code is just like the starting point. Well, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's because I mean, everybody knows it's a computer that has a little window for it, so yada, yada. But uh, uh, it's part of the salt of the, the puzzle. And uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I like going to Spencer's and getting them big posts, and I'll solve them in the store, and, uh, and, <laughs> and that's and that's how you keep your brain fresh, yeah. making doing something that you've never done. You before. obviously do a lot more stuff on that motor car stuff. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean uh, the the weird uh, the guy that uh, has my mortgage, he says, I, I don't care what show you're on, if you don't have the money <laughs> yeah. to pay your mortgage, yeah. oh yeah, I'm going to well. kick you out of your house. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll still want an autograph. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Sign this on your way out. And, and uh, get to step it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've been lucky enough to uh, stay more than busy, um, either at my shop or at a handful of shops around the country. A couple guys high profile, but just because we've been friends, like I said before, TV even cared who we were. And I've been doing it so long that whew, I just uh, when. I can't remember last time talking to my wife off camera here. When did we, uh, when was the last time we had she took a vacation vacation? We travel a lot. People see us all over the globe in car shows, doing cars, hauling cars, working with famous people and everything, but to take a vacation and get away, it's just no time. It's too busy. Yeah. Too busy, too busy, too busy. Yeah, but close your eyes and mentally picture it'll ring in like the Wall Street Journal. The last car <laughs> that they possibly modified got modified yesterday. They're all done. Yeah. Every car is done. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the hell all you guys are going to do. They're all hope, modified. Hope that somebody else makes a <laughs> brand new Camaro body or a brand new Mustang <laughs> body, you know, or a brand new uh, yeah. vintage Corvette body so that we can keep doing it, you know. Yeah. I mean, because uh, you know it's any day now that somebody's going to come up with some kind of power supply or an engine source that's going to make the gasoline engine obsolete. I mean, uh, and then... Uh, and then we you get to start guys got to worry about that. I'm done with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot worse things they have to do for a living. I mean, there's so many, there's so many great people. Even if you don't do some of the high-profile stuff like you and I have been lucky enough to do, there's there's so many great people in this industry. Oh my God! There's, there's, so, many, there's so many. There's so many different avenues yeah. in this industry. I mean, right. like, name another business where there's as many different avenues, whether you work on brand new late model stuff, physically, on an assembly line, or you're an engineer, or you build hot rods, or you design products. I mean, there's so many legs yeah. in the automotive industry, custom or OEM, that are, it's just it's crazy. I mean, you can pick something to do, yeah. and you never not have enough work doing it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's unreal. Well, actually, I think it depends on what you do. You might pick something too niche. Yeah. <laughs> For those who don't want to work as much, I, I like like a, I don't want to work on uh, Fiat's made between nineteen uh, <laughs> yeah. nineteen fifty nine no. and uh, seventy. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I spend I spend most. That's a good point. But I spend most of my time, and always have, uh, probably because of my age, with a street rods and American Muscle. Right. Yeah, that's what most. That's what most of my time is spent doing. What is one car that everybody always asks this to me, so I get to ask it for the first time. What is one car if you that you haven't had, or maybe you have and you've been lucky enough to get it, that you want before your time is up? You want to you want to do it for yourself, it's gonna be your toy, you're gonna to never get rid of it, you're gonna keep it, what would it be? I would like to totally uh, rest a mod of boss nine. Whoa. <laughs> I want I want to completely Make it street rod paint. I mean, I want to be able to take Laguna Seca with it. So you're gonna do this? You gonna try and find one? 
Yeah. Yeah. Yep, and I wanna and I wanna just completely go through I mean just any any, any trick that I can possibly come up with. <laughs> And, or somebody else and, and, I, and, all, and, I, and I want all the peers to cry and weep and moan. And, <laughs> yeah, look at the end. <laughs> I can't believe you did that. Yeah. Like you said, that was the last one. <laughs> 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 you know, you know, <laughs> get it. If you're going through turn three. <laughs> yep. yep. I'm going to be the one chrome plating your gold medal. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> hey, Hook, you better hook up with, uh, we better hook up with Steve and enhance plating and, uh, and get him to on board. <laughs> Here, Steve, here's what we're going to do. Gotta <laughs> get somebody's attention. Yeah. Well, I hope I can keep doing it. I mean, I, I've been blessed. I haven't had too many real jobs. I've worked my butt off. <laughs> But I haven't had too many real jobs in my life. <laughs> I hope I can keep going. It's, yeah. been, it's been crazy. Never boring. Yeah. Sometimes tight, sometimes hard, sometimes pinching pennies and everything else. And I mean, like, like you well, said. what's funny is that, uh, uh, I mean, I, I got thrust into this and I had to learn how to weld and work well. And, uh, <laughs> and I'd been, every, I did anything but body work all the way up to, Six years ago. That, that's about the only thing that I don't indulge in anymore. Like, I'll do all the metal fabrication and everything, but the, the finished body, right. the good stuff, yeah. that paint work, I'm out. Yeah, I'm yeah. Just, Unfortunately, back in the 80s, during the, during the era of uh, uh, Enron and Centauri and all that, yep. I, I poisoned myself uh -huh. by shooting with a little paper mask on in a yep. regular garage with a wet concrete floor yep. in the middle of the winter. When the and you're thinking nice you're floor. fine? No, you're not. About an hour after I left the shop, and we should paint it. Here's my real quick story. My buddy's garage, just a regular garage, went down the concrete floor. We were painting my 47 Ford pickup, and uh, he, um, we, it, you don't notice how foggy it gets in there until you walk out of the garage and notice how clear you can see outside. And um, we, we quit spraying at like 10 o'clock at night. And I said, I'm out of here, I'm going home. I feel like crap after doing that. I went home. An hour later, um, I ended up in the emergency room because I poisoned myself. And when I got there, John was already there. We well, both, we both poisoned ourselves from, from the pain right. and inhaling it in our skin, you know, from hours of pain yeah, and centauri and stuff. And yeah, it was great. We thought we were, in, you know, invincible. Figure you're the only immortal to like 30 right. goes, It goes from pain. <laughs> But yeah, so I don't paint no more. It doesn't bother me. Like the smell of it doesn't bother me. The chemicals don't bother me. But if I'm around for when somebody's actually shooting in a booth and I'm around, my brain goes, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> time to go. Yeah, pull that sheet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't do finish paint. I don't do finish paint and body work anymore. Well, pretty much Bang. indulge in anything else. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I mostly have like break dust, clutch dust. Oh yeah. Yeah. This old Dilio stuff? Oh, you're not yeah. old enough for it to be back. Oh, yeah, I'm old, I'm old yeah. enough. I think we're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You need to blow up the, the black booger plugs out. <laughs> and it's flying around you when you're taking Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, he, then they got them wet things, and the wet things, whenever you spray it, it actually kicks up more dust than the dry thing did. And, uh, but sometimes we actually use brake clean to clean brakes. Yep. <laughs> In the red can, not the green yeah, well, can. Well, the always, stuff that makes your skin dry out. I always used it to find out if it was cut or not, because you can have <laughs> nine million <laughs> cuts on you, and, that, and that, if you're cut, that, the brake clean will help you find it. <laughs> if you narrow, have, narrow down the area where it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, see, that's, that's how much fun it is to do all this stuff. Yeah. Even though it's hard work, it's tons of fun. Ask anybody who's not slept in two days and tried to meet a deadline. It's, some crazy build. Or, or you're uh, cli climbing in, 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 in a car or over your car and to find out you're in a nest of fire ants. Have you done that yet? <laughs> I've done that. Ant ants and rodents and yep, whatever <laughs> else. <laughs> Let's see, the craziest thing. What's the, what's the craziest thing you ever ran into? Whether you just took it out of a junkyard and took it back to the shop or took it out of the garage and nobody's touched it in 10 years. What's the craziest thing that's ever looked you in the face? <laughs> taking a car apart. I've had some no. of my lightning. 
working on a car. <laughs>
And he's young. He's still out there working on the alerts. He's still out there working on the alerts. We've been there talking this long. He's still pounding them. I don't know. Good. 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 Um, kids, no matter where it was from, even in my own garage, where they uh, I, I, they see it on TV, uh, and they go to the car shows. Oh, I want to build hot rods. I want to, you know, I want to do this for a living. I want to, uh, you know, get involved in either for themselves or in business, everything else. And I've seen young kids walk in and find out how much physical work and how many hours of work it is, and just go. There's no way I'm doing this. This is crazy. And when they find out that what they see you and I do, and all the rest of the guys on TV that we know, is this much of what we do. And yeah. This much of what we do. And, and, and what's what the Monday through Sunday, 12, 14 hours a yeah. day. And I, 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 told, I told young kids, um, if you think that this is a lot of work, you need to find something else to do, or you need to get a job as a regular mechanic, and go work in a dealership for some sort of for eight to five, you can work in a whole. Because if you want to get the hot rod world, there's no such thing as set hours. There's no such thing as set vacation time. There's going to be times when you call your wife or your girlfriend and you cancel a date because you have no choice or you lose your job. And, and I mean, it's just, that's the way it is. I mean, there's just, there's, the deadlines are crazy. The, the, you know, the scheduling is crazy for, for building and doing what you need to do. And this, like, it's not being a regular mechanic. It's whatever it takes to stop. Exactly. Some of them do it, some of them don't, but it's getting harder and harder to find younger guys. And I can testify to that myself because we go to some of these big, big car shows and we have, we being, you know, any of the high profile guys, everybody knows, um, we'll go to the World of Wheels, the Auto Rams and stuff, and we'll have groups of high school kids come in and tech school kids come in, and there'll be a few hundred or a few thousand kids there and we talk to them about the industry. Um, and it's getting harder and harder to find younger guys that re really end up caring enough about it to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just, they just don't have it in them. But it is fun. I don't know if you've ever done anything like that, but it is fun to watch the young girls. Even there may be, there may be 500 guys from 16 to 19, and there may be a dozen young girls Sorry. that may drive it. And you watch them, and they're more bright-eyed, and excited and everything about it than two thirds of the guys in the audience. I would have to see that. How far? How far they end up taking it? Yeah. Who knows? But as far as when they're in school, right? When they're taking the shop classes and when they're doing yeah. the practical application stuff, they're more excited about it than the guys. Most of the guys. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's neat to watch. I would have to see that. That's, that's, neat that's to watch. Fascinating. Yeah, like, like when you go, if you go to uh, to do a uh, personal appearance or go to do yep. a build or something, one of the big shows. Uh, sometimes I'll go into town a day early, and I'll go watch the summer, even if I'm not involved. Like if Chip's there doing it, or if, if uh, Gene Winfield's there doing it, yeah. a bunch of guys are in. But I'll go in, and I'll watch these guys. I tell these kids this, and just watch the expressions, and watch, you know, the, the groups of uh, classes inside. This, this, okay, who's really interested? <coughs> How many are really here because they're interested, you know? It's, yeah. It's pretty wild. It is wild to watch. But, uh, I don't know. People like yourself, and uh, I think even myself, we actually need to start finding our apprentices, our Padawans, because, I mean, uh, something can happen, and, uh, and just the wealth of the knowledge that you have to be going in and into yep. Yep. And it. Well, and that needs to be passed on. Even at home in my shop, where, you know, my shop is on my ranch. It's a, a 40 by 60, two-story building. I yep. do you know, three or four cars at a time whether it's just an upgrade or, or complete builds. And I I'll, I let guys come into my shop. You know, I'll meet them, I'll you know, get to know them, they'll come around and watch once in a while, and we meet them at, at car shows or cruise nights or whatever, and they say they, they want to learn, they want to help, they want to do it. Steve, I'll, you know, whatever, I'll come in and do something simple, I'll do just assembly. And um, unfortunately, even when you give them the opportunities, um, they'll show up two or three times, when you call them, say, flower, 
then next time they don't make it, then they don't see you for a couple of weeks. And then, like I said, it's like they, when they find out how much actual oh, right. work yeah. it is, they, they just get disheartened about it, or whether they get discouraged because they weren't expecting it to be, or they are expecting it to be more fun. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. And they just they lose it. And they just stop. But, but we also live in a society where I mean, and uh, when when you and I were growing up, I mean, we could get a paper route. And the children are not even allowed to work until they're 18. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, 18 is a bad year to learn a work ethic. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 18 yeah. is the worst year in the yeah. world. Now you need to learn how to bust your ass, even though you've been sitting on that couch playing Nintendo for yeah. seven yeah. years. Well, no, my dad taught me my work ethic when I was 12. I, I, had my, I literally had my first job. Job, job. Got yeah. paid. Had to be there uh, working for my dad when I was 12. Really? Yeah. I was among grass at 10, and uh, my uncle had a junkyard, and he let me uh, uh, put a timing chain in a 73 uh, Granville. And uh, when I heard that thing start up, for, for I mean, uh, I, well, I was. Did you get it in right? Oh, yeah. Everything lined up, all the grooves lined up where they're supposed to. <laughs> And then, and then it ran, and the, the hair stuck up on the back of my head, and it's stuck up on the back of my head all the way down to my head. <laughs> and uh, I, it, 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 it was, oh yeah, bringing them back to life is the best thing. Yeah, yeah that was the that was that was my eureka moment. I mean, that's why that's why you to this day, if you're in the garage when you get around to fire the car for the first time, yeah. it doesn't matter if there's no interior in it. Right. If it's got brakes and it fires up, you put a milk crate on the floor, <laughs> you sit on that milk crate, you pull that thing out of the gear, and you go down the driveway, you go out on the road because it's moving under its own power. Oh, you yeah. back up, you, have, you fall off the milk crate three times, and you get back up. <laughs> on I think that's why well, I'm glad I don't build boats. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, hearing them fire and get them run for the first time, or bring one back to life for the oh, first yeah. time in 30 years, is still exactly the same as it was. Years ago, like whenever I got that Diamond Rio started. Uh, oh, yes, I did see that. That, that was awesome. Yeah, that was fun. That was that was the time that you jumped up on Richard Bundy. Yeah. You grew up on him and hugged him. On a picky muffin. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. I remember that episode. Yeah. Snorted yeah. a shot of tequila. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a sinus infection, and believe it or not, uh, about four hours later, I didn't have a sign yeah. anymore. <laughs> I was still blind because of uh, the, the <laughs> tequila does not make uh, eye wash. For, it, 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, now bringing one back, especially when it's been sitting for so long. Is, yeah, that, that thing was such a time capsule. I mean, I had to figure out how to change the tires uh, on that one, and I had to figure out how to even moisten the spokes so so they would swell back up yeah, the thing. Yeah. And uh have you ever went in the spokes and you don't know the same set? Uh no but I know what you're talking about only because we have had a couple of wooden boats in our life. And if you get a wooden boat that hasn't been in the water in thirty years, you hang it in the water and you wait for the wood to get wet and swell back up and seal everything so it doesn't Fill up full of water. It's right. Not really it's the same thing. You get it back up and you tighten up the spokes. Yeah, well, it's it's tightens up against that steel band. Yeah, it's it's got to be the same thing. Yeah. But yeah. That, that was just incredible. Damn, I'm old. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys tired of us yet? We can sit here and do this all night, but yeah. I think we're going to go check on some more shrimp or. Yeah, or I, 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 or I think you're probably about ready to eat the table. I think you guys should say who you are and what you're on, just in case new people get on they don't know who you are. Right. Or you can go, go Google my name. That'll suck. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, so what, what's it? Steve Mang. M A N K. That's a crazy name, yeah. Steve Mang. My name's Tom Smith. That's and uh, I was even born in any town in USA. I was in your wallet when you bought it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was in, in the. I hug in the blind. Well, that wasn't my own way. It was just a, <laughs> a kid. I don't know who's kid it was either. But we took the picture, and it was in your wallet, and uh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was Miss uh, Mystic Garage. Yeah. We've both been doing this way too long. Yep. Yeah. And uh, that was a good chat. <laughs> I think that was a total money chat. Yeah. 
Hey, Jesse. Hey, who are you? I'm Billy. Billy. Oh, Billy. Oh, Billy. Oh, Billy. Oh, Billy. Oh, Billy. Oh, Billy. Oh,